Fewer young people than ever are going to be able to buy a house in their lifetime, and at the same time, homes are getting more expensive every year. But if nobody can afford to buy a house, then how the heck do they keep getting more expensive? A family home should be the bedrock of your financial life. It gives you somewhere to live while building up equity in a place that you can one day call your own. Owning a home with a 30-year mortgage is cheaper out of pocket every month in most cities than renting. So if you can buy your own home, you will be richer now and richer in the future. You already know this, but if you're in the 75% of my audience that doesn't own a home, it's probably because you can't afford one. According to a report by Redfin, only 21% of homes that went on sale in 2022 were considered affordable. That's down from 60% of homes that went on sale in 2021. That means in just one year, two-thirds of all affordable housing became too expensive for the average American. The team conducting the survey concluded that housing affordability is at its lowest point in history. But what's the end game here? If people can't afford a home, then house prices can't go up anymore, right? Wrong. Let's understand why that is. There are mainly three reasons why it could get a lot worse before it gets better. The first reason is that houses do not need to be affordable for you to buy one. This might sound strange, but there's a whole industry that's making it possible. When you want to buy a house, you don't have to save up all the money for the whole house. Instead, you save up for a down payment, which is just a part of the house's price. The problem is, the cost of houses is going up much faster than people's wages. Imagine if, a few years ago, a house cost $230,000 and now it costs $330,000. That's a $100,000 increase in just a short time. Meanwhile, the average American makes about $59,000 before taxes. After taxes, they take home about $49,000. Now, let's say this average person saved a lot of money. 70% of their take-home pay for three years to buy a house. You might think they'd be close to affording a house, right? But here's the catch. Because house prices went up so fast, they're still far from being able to buy one. So, even if you're really good at saving money, it's tough to keep up with rising house prices. Most people aim to save just for the down payment, not the whole house so that 70% savings rate drops to a more manageable 14%. If you're in a household with two incomes, it might be 7%. But even that can be challenging when many Americans can't afford a $1,000 expense without borrowing money. So, while saving 14% sounds better than 70%, it's still tough because it only helps you keep up with the rising prices, not actually get closer to owning a home. Banks and lenders know it's hard for people to save up for a down payment, especially when they also have to pay for food, rent, and other important things that are getting more expensive. So, they've made it easier to buy a house with a smaller down payment. For example, the average down payment for someone buying their first home is just 7%. And for those who have already owned a home before, it's only 17%. So, even if you can only put down a small deposit, house prices can keep going up and it might still be possible for you to buy one. If saving for a 7% down payment seems tough, there's even a new option where Zillow is testing a 1% down payment loan to help folks who struggle to save make one of the biggest financial decisions of their lives. Here's how it works. The buyer pays a down payment of 1% and then Zillow makes an additional contribution of 2% at closing. That is a grant and doesn't need to be paid back. So even though houses are making more money than you are, the price of entry is being reduced just as fast. But that's only the down payment. You still need to make the repayments. And if you can't put 20% down, what hope do you have of making repayments on a house? The second reason houses can keep getting more expensive, even when it seems like no one can afford them, is because not many people are selling their homes. And those who do own a home with a fixed mortgage rate below 3% aren't rushing to sell either. So, right now, there's a shortage of homes for sale, even though there are people who want to move. In fact, home sales in the USA are at their lowest point in 10 years, despite the fact that more people are living here. Back in 2021, 6 million homes were sold, but now it's down to just 4 million per year. 
Why? Well, folks who already have a mortgage don't want to sell because renting a place is even more expensive. If they buy a new home, they'd have to get a new mortgage, which comes with much higher interest rates than what they're currently paying. That's why there's a higher demand for rental properties. So, because of this, not many people are moving out of their rental homes or selling their houses. This has caused a shortage of available homes for sale, making it harder for people to find a place to buy. Many people moved during COVID, and moving again so soon would be a big hassle. Plus, getting a new home loan would mean paying a lot more in interest. Usually, people stay in their homes for around 13.2 years. After all the home buying excitement in the last few years, more Americans are just staying put, and they're not thinking about selling anytime soon. New buyers are also waiting, hoping that interest rates will drop before they decide to buy. There are still three groups of people in this situation. First, there are those who can afford to buy a new home without needing a mortgage because they have money from selling their old house. For example, if you're a boomer who bought your home for a low price in the 1970s and now want to downsize, this is a great time to take advantage of the higher prices. You can sell your big house and get a smaller one and you'll have more money to spend. The second group are people moving interstate. Unaffordable housing is pushing people out of expensive cities across the country. You would probably prefer to stay in your home city even if you had a job that you could do from anywhere. Closeness to friends, family and familiar amenities is why people only live 18 miles from their hometown on average in defiance of the part-time hedge fund manager and full-time YouTube comedian Patrick Boyle. Where should my friend How Money Works live? I don't know, maybe Dubai. He's one of those flashy YouTuber types. He probably wants to live on one of those palm islands, hang out at malls, buy designer goods, and maybe do some indoor skiing. That's just the kind of guy he is. I chose to stay in my crappy one-bedroom San Francisco apartment because moving is a pain in the ass. But if you're really struggling to afford a high cost of living city, you can improve your lifestyle by moving to cheaper cities with lower rents and property prices. If you move from a city like San Francisco, Seattle or New York to any other city in the country, you're going to be able to buy a lot more house for the same money. Your higher income from working in these areas will push up local prices and in the process of avoiding the rising home prices, you have just made it worse. The third group are investors. Investors only care about the return on their assets. Right now, home prices are high and investors who use loans to buy properties are also dealing with higher interest rates. But in exchange for this, they're charging higher rent to people who live in their properties for a long time and to those who use them for short-term stays, like on Airbnb. But here's the thing. Even though investors are making money, the prices of homes are still too high for regular folks. This group of investors has been buying a lot of homes. In fact, according to Redfin, their home purchases went up by a whopping 145% in 2022. Among these investors, the ones buying properties for real estate investment trusts are growing the fastest. Real estate investment trusts are like a special kind of investment that works like a big pool of money. Lots of people invest their money in a real estate investment trust, and then the fund uses that money to buy a bunch of different properties. These real estate investment trusts used to mainly focus on things like shopping malls, hotels, warehouses and offices. But now, they're getting really popular for residential properties because many people can't afford to buy a home, and they want a piece of the real estate market. Some people are even putting their savings into real estate investment trusts instead of saving for a down payment on a house. They do this because these funds tend to make money in a way that's similar to the housing market. So they hope their savings will grow along with rising house prices. This has made real estate investment trusts really popular, but it's also one of the reasons why houses are becoming more expensive. But guess what? This can't keep going on forever things are starting to change. In fact, a recent report from Redfin showed that investor purchases have slowed down quite a bit. And in some cities like Las Vegas, Austin, Miami and Houston, big institutional investors have completely stopped buying houses. There's also something else worth mentioning. 
a big company called Blackstone had to stop people from taking their money out of a $71 billion investment fund earlier this year. This raised concerns that the whole system might be overvalued. If too many people try to take their money out too quickly, Blackstone might have to sell some of the properties it owns. And if that happens, it could bring down the prices of homes even more. So, while it might seem like home prices are going up and up, there are signs that things might change in the future. But don't get too excited if you own shares in a real estate investment trust. The easiest way for you to sell those shares is to find another investor to buy them, and it doesn't involve cashing out the actual properties owned by the fund. The bonus fourth reason is that wealthy families are just doing a better job of holding on to more properties for themselves. In the past, family wealth struggled to get past the first two generations, but now that investing has become so easy and lucrative, we might be starting to live in a new age of nobility where family dynasties can last centuries. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing.